In the last section, we learned about the sequencer, which is essentially an editing tool where we can bring in our cameras, our characters, we have a timeline, we can start blending animations together and really building out our first shot. So hopefully you got to play around with that. And in this section, I'm gonna show you how to actually modify some of the animations that we have. So we're actually gonna start animating a couple of things. We're gonna go to the content folder and we are gonna open up map example three. And again, make sure you've saved if you need to save. And here we have bit and we're gonna go back to content sequences and we're gonna double click on example three shot. So in example three shot, we have the original dancing animation that you saw in the last section. So I'm gonna just scrub through this so you can see. And then I changed it so that she's blinking and she kind of puts her hand on her hip a little bit. So I'm gonna show you how I did that and how you can modify your own animation. So we're gonna go back to the content browser and you're gonna right click and we're gonna to go to animation. And again, we're gonna make a new level sequence. And I'm gonna call this modify animation. If you have an animation in mind already, feel free to name it that instead. So I'm gonna double click on that, hit save. And you're gonna click on bit and we're gonna drag bit here and go ahead and add whatever animation you want to modify. So I was doing the dancing one and I'm just gonna drag this out for the length of it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this little track sign next to bit and we're gonna go to control rig and pick FK control rig. Now what a rig is, is essentially if you think of the skeleton and the blend shapes together, that's what a rig is. It's just everything that the character um, can do and it's different controls that we have so that we can move the skeleton and we can move the blend shapes. So you've noticed after you add that, she kind of popped back into this pose. So we're gonna right click on FK control rig and we're gonna go up to additive, which is going to allow us to animate on top of the animation that we already have. And when I click that, you may notice that our character has disappeared. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna run a tool to bring our character back. We're gonna to go to the content browser and we're gonna to navigate to the top content folder and you're gonna look for this BPW prep character widget. We're gonna right click on this and do run editor utility widget. And we're gonna get this nice little button here and you can just move that out of the way. If you want to dock it, you can just click on it and drag and release and then it will stay there for you. Go ahead and give this button a press and you'll see bit has came back and we can go back to the sequencer and continue to now animate on top of our character. If you are making your own sequences and you are going to be modifying animations, you are always going to need to give this button a press. So as you go along and you're learning and you're making your own, if your character disappears on you when you switch the FK control rig to additive, always just give this button a press and your character should come back. So we're gonna expand out this control rig and you'll see all the different bones and joints. These should look familiar to you from the first section. And if you keep scrolling down, you should see all the blend shapes for the face here. So you can expand these out and you'll see a different slider for the blend shapes. So I blink left. If I go and move this to negative one, it'll open her eye. So usually these values can go from negative one to one depending on what the blend shape is. Anything beyond that, the shapes might start getting a little wonky. Um, so just keep that in mind. So if I set this to negative one, it'll have her eye open. And what you do in animation is you set keys and keys are essentially kind of freezing a moment in time for that pose. So when you animate something, you have a bunch of keys over time and you're telling the different blend shapes and the different bones and joints where to be at that certain time. So to add a key, you can hit this little plus sign 
and then I'm going to drag my timeline. So up here you can see that there's numbers and it's kind of like a timeline. So what we're doing is we're setting keys at different times and when we watch it back, it's essentially animating those poses. So we have eye blink left at negative one and then let's set it back to zero. After you add your first key, you might notice that if you change the value and you press enter, it will automatically key it for you. If it's not doing that, again, you just press this key button and it will key it for you. So now if I scrub, you can see that her eye is blending between those. So even though I just had, I said, oh, go from negative one to zero, you can see all the values in between happen automatically. So let's go find her other eye blink right. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to set it to negative one and then I'm going to move this to here. Oops, forgot my key. Let's go back, set it to negative one and then let's drag this here and set this to zero. And now we have our first blink and again you can drag it forward a bit and set it back to negative one and negative one. Okay. So we got some blinking down. Let's go modify her body now. You can go ahead and keep keying those values and let's go to her body now. So you can click um, in this window. So let me get a little closer. You can click on the bone if you're not sure which one it is or what it's called. Um, so this is her upper arm. And then what you can do, again, if we expand this out, you can see there's location and rotation. And you can also kind of scrub these values so you can see what they do. And again, you can zero them all back out to kind of reset it. So I'm gonna to wanna to be doing rotation. And let's see which one. Okay, back to zero. That'd be like, maybe she's running. Let's see this one. There we go. So I think that was kind of around the pose that I had. So I'm gonna move this back. And again, you can see how it's affecting the animation after you change it. So I like that there. I'm gonna add a key. And then I wanna bring kind of her hand towards her hip a little bit more. So I think I need to get one of these bones. I'm not sure which one. Um, don't be afraid to kind of click and explore all the different ones um, that you need. So I just did upper arm. I think there's a lower arm here. Oop, about the right side. And if you know what it's called, you can also quickly search for it. So you do lower arm and it's, hmm, there we go. We'll do that, add a key for lower arm. And if you add a key that's in the wrong place, you can just grab it and drag it to where you need it. So I'm gonna clear out my search and now let's pull out and we see we have some blinking and her hand on her hip. So you can go through and kind of get familiar with all the different bones and kind of what happens when you rotate them um, around. So you can see there's all these different things that you can do um, on the character. So you can do that. And as you click on it, again, it'll highlight it down here for you. So you can easily add a key and you can kind of change it over time too. So maybe we do that. So you can see it's kind of like a wave. <laughs> um, you go back up, add another key. Okay, so here's our modified animation. And what we can do is we can actually save this out as a clip. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click on SK bit and we're gonna do bake animation sequence. And it's gonna open up this window for you and you can pick where you wanna save it. I'm gonna save it in bit animations. And it's gonna ask you what you wanna call this. I'm gonna call this bit modified dance and we're gonna hit okay and then you'll get this pop-up you can leave all the default values um, but just in case you've played with them and you're not sure here is what they are 
and we're going to do export to animation sequence. And you can see you got a little pop up here saying it was created. If you're quick enough, you can click on that and it'll open it up for you. And you can see here's kind of our modified version. But if you can't get to that pop up fast enough, let me show you where it goes. We go to the content browser, go back to content. And I save mine in the animation library, so I'm going to double click on here, bit animations, and you can see here is bit modified dance, and if I double click on that, I can see here is those first few frames blinking and her arms in a different pose. The process we just went through of modifying an animation and saving it into its own animation sequence is the same process that Supergiant Robot Brothers used while creating their animation inside of Unreal. So saving your modified animations into their very own animation asset is super helpful because then you can add those to shots, you can blend them together with other animations, and it's a quick way to build up your library, which we're really going to start to leverage in the next couple sections. So why don't you modify some of your animations, make something fun, make something silly, save those out, and get ready to use those next.